everybody, Crazy New York Driver here, and today's date is June the 1st, 2008. We're about to start Forgotten New York Tour number 34, which is going to start at the base of the Manhattan Bridge. So, I guess we better get started. We don't want them to leave without us, do we? Come on, let's go see. Um, the first thing we're going to do today is I'm going to talk about the structures in back of me and ahead of me, and we're going to do the team picture because everybody's here. I like to do the team picture early in the day. Uh, then what we're going to do is, unfortunately, we can't take the more scenic of the two walkways across the Manhattan Bridge because it's closed and they're making a movie over there. Uh, they're taking a Pelham 1, 2, 3. Uh, and I guess they hijacked up the uh, subway right here on the bridge, apparently. Uh, so that walkway is closed. We'll take the southern, well, the northern walkway. Unfortunately, we'll have to deal with bike riders along the way. Uh, and some of these guys are tough. Uh, well, I mean, I mean that because they want to race and we're in their way. So we're going to have to be gingerly about it. We'll have to get out of the way, apparently. Um, yeah, it, you know, it should take about a, a half hour, 45 minutes to cross the Manhattan Bridge. And I'll show you a couple of things in Brooklyn Heights. We're not going to dwell there too long. Uh, and then we're going to then take a, another walk across the uh, Brooklyn Bridge, which uh, many of you may prefer than a Manhattan Bridge, but we'll see. Um, Manhattan Bridge was not walkable until about uh, it was either 1999 or 2001. But in those two years, stick in my head, um, for a decade after decade, the Manhattan Bridge was closed to pedestrians and bikes. If you, if you rode the uh, if you rode the train on the bridge, all you'd see was an empty space where the walkway was. Well, as a consequence of the repair work that was being done on the Manhattan Bridge to make it safe for train traffic, once again, uh, that happened between 1990 and 1999, uh, the two walkways were once again opened up. Right, right side, right side, right side. Nice trackage. Let's get some of the trackage in here. With the graffiti. That's against the wall, by the way, to even film a track. Is it? Yeah. On this? I was told you, you can't even you can't take photos of people. I've seen no signs to the That's true. Yeah, the converse. Know, anyway. Tunnels and, and, and towers. Oh, too bad. Yeah, I'm too far over. I know, I know. Let the record show that it's crowded up here. You're going to go by an old synagogue on the left side. It's a landmark and they have tours. I'm going to go, I want to go one day in that tour. In the synagogue? It's going to be on your, right on that side street. I think it's Eldridge Street, right there. It's Places 
is a refuge and a vista. A vista is self-explanatory. You have a vista now. This is why people like to go on the Brooklyn Bridge. This is why people like to go up to the Empire State Building, because you can see the city. You have a sense of being able to see everything. A refuge is a little bit harder. It's uh, And what Kevin does a lot of is searching for refuges, searching for places in the city that are kind of your own, uh, that are an escape from you know the hustle and bustle, or that are unknown, or that are interesting, or things like that. And one of the things that uh, people look for is a refuge and a vista in the same place. And there are not very many of those at all. Um, you have, you know, some waterfront locations, some other places. And if you think of your favorite place in the city, in all probability, you're going to think of somewhere where you have a view, a vista, and also have kind of a sense of, of belonging, of this is your little safe, interesting space that's yours. Um, now what happens is you don't have a lot of those places, so some folks like me and Steve and my friend Shane over there go searching for them ourselves and find them in strange, uh, strange areas, such as the top of this bridge right here, or the top of a lot of other bridges. Uh, and the tops of bridges are probably the best natural observation point that you can have in a city. Because not only you have the sense of a vista because you're up high, and you have the sense of the refuge because you're separated from the city vertically, and you're also separated from the city horizontally. You have the city out in front of you, but it's off and down below. And the sense of that, of that separation from the city, the vista, combined with the refuge of being, you know, in all probability, the only person that's on top of the bridge for, you know, at least a little while, uh, really contributes to probably the most amazing public space spaces that I've been to. Um, now, the interesting thing about this bridge that you can tell from the top, it's a little tougher to tell from here, is how flimsy it is. Uh, people have been climbing bridges a long time. In 1903, there's a New York Times article from 1903 about a couple, a man and a woman, climbing up the cables of the Williamsburg Bridge and then climbing back down during opening day. Um, and this is, you know, something that when professionals do it, they undergo extensive safety precautions. And if you don't undergo extensive safety precautions, I, uh, Kevin's uh, a comment about putting life at risk is a little, uh, a, a little extreme, but there, there have been accidents and there have been people who have actually died. In 1998, somebody climbing up the Brooklyn Bridge fell off uh, trying to set the world record for most bridges climbed in 24 hours, and he fell off the first one he tried. Uh, so, so really, it's the kind, you know, I'm never going to tell anybody, you know, not to do with what, what they got to do, but uh, there are very, very real dangers in it. Uh, with the Manhattan Bridge, it's amazing, because on top of the Brooklyn Bridge, it's a very solid sense of solidity. Uh, you can jump up and down, you can do handstands, you can do cartwheels, it's big, it's broad, it's made out of rock, it's very solid, and you feel very safe when you're on top of there. The Williamsburg Bridge, which was built, which was the second grand bridge built across, is a little flimsier. Uh, it's not made out of stone, it's made out of metal, but there's still that same kind of sense of solidity. Uh, a little less when you get all the way on top, a little more in the little, in, you know, right before you get up there. Uh, but it's, you know, much like climbing, uh, much like climbing a construction site, something like that. What is this lady doing? Are they filming? Back in, in 1999, I saw a penny on Broadway, and at that time, I had my vision was 2020, and I said that looked like an Indian head penny. A 12-year-old beat me to it, and he picked up the penny. I acted like if I could see the penny, and sure enough, I was right. It was dated 1864. Apparently, when they were doing the construction or renovation to the park, they must have. They must have bucked a penny out in the park, but I wanted to get to that kid. Yeah, well, the Indian head pennies were in production between 1859 and 1909. Right, right. Uh, now, hopefully next year, though, we'll do something with the Lincoln. Yeah, with the 100th anniversary. 